First implemented with 2008 server, Network Access Protection, or NAP, addresses security risks that come from within an organization as opposed to without. While a well-configured firewall on IDS may protect an entity from outside threats, it does not protect it from internal breaches and security due to large numbers of unhealthy clients accessing a company's internal resources. Portable network devices like flash drives, cell phones, tablets, PDAs, iPads, iPods, MacBooks using airport and PC laptops provide a large security risk within an organization's internet security that cannot be mitigated through traditional firewalls and intrusion detection. Network access protection has both server and client components. NAP servers must be 2008 servers or above. NAP clients can be Windows XP Service Pack 3, Vista, or Windows 7. Note, Windows XP Service Pack 3 does not have the full NAP client features that Vista and Windows 7 have. Network access protection is a function of the network policy server, or MPS, and controls access to network resources based on a client's identity and its compliance with security policies such as updates, firewall configuration, antivirus definitions, and IP settings. If NAP finds clients to do not comply with its policies, it can block their access to the network and attempt to automatically bring those clients into compliance. NAP makes use of enforcement methods. Some of these are DHCP enforcement. If the NAP client is out of compliance, it forces the DHCP server to give the client an alternate configuration that limits access to network resources until the client is brought into compliance. IPSEC enforcement uses PKI-issued health certificates for clients that meet compliance. Without these certificates, clients are denied participation in IPSEC-secured communication. VPN enforcement. This restricts network access to VPN clients based on their compliance with NAP security policies. A short breakdown of NAP is as follows. In Step 1, a NAP health server is set up utilizing MPS or Network Policy Server services. In Step 2, NAP clients connect to the network and must submit health information to a NAP enforcement point. In Step 3, the NAP enforcement point then submits the client's health information to a NAP policy server using RADIUS. The SNAP server must act as a RADIUS authentication server for the NAP client. Step 4. The NAP server evaluates the client's overall health based on its compliance with health rules and requirements. In Step 5, if the required conditions are met, the NAP client receives a health certificate from a certificate authority especially designated to provide certificates for NAP clients. Finally, in Stage 6, if the NAP client does not meet health requirements, it may optionally be placed on a network with restricted access or simply denied access to the DHCP server. This video is only part 1 of 4 and has given us a brief introduction to network access protection. In the next 3 videos in this series, we will see how to actually implement NAP by installing and configuring it step by step.